best place you've ever been? So I, I can't say I'm much of a skier, um, but I will tell, tell you, um, if there's a perfect experience um, on this earth, I had, I mean, there's a couple, right? I, I, I'm married to an amazing human being and I have beautiful children. But as far as army experiences and places are concerned, um, I uh, had the opportunity to ski the Alps. Mm. Um, now, not the Swiss Alps, but the Bavarian Alps. Alps the same. Mm. But when I tell you it was a beautiful place, I, A, this is my first time skiing ever. Okay. Uh, B, um, had in my mind what skiing would be, like this cold experience and you know, you're just trying to survive. <laughs> <laughs> The, the hill, right, or the mountain, whatever it is. and um, But not this day. I was in snow pants and a t-shirt. Mm. The sun was shining. The trees were green. The snow was powdery. Um, and I'm learning how to ski. So there was this really cool ski instructor. And I'm skiing down the Alps with no poles <laughs> because that's how they teach you. Wow. Um, I guess poles are for speed <laughs> and, and, and skis <laughs> are for skiing. They don't want you and, to have too much speed. Uh, so, you know, I think that was the best traveling experience I can, I can think of. It, it sticks with me. It's, it's when, I, when I experienced it, I was amazed. And when I look back, you know, when I tell people about my journeys, that's the one story I always go back to. Now, so if you're a recruiter out there and you heard the story she just told about the Alps, use that in your <laughs> videos and you'll get more people to join the Army. You Come can on. ski the Alps. <laughs> so that's awesome so traveling. Mm -hmm. What would you tell the people? The people. What would you tell someone who is thinking about joining the military in general mm -hmm. or specifically the Army? Mm -hmm. What advice would you give them? I would say prepare yourself for um, a really tough journey. Um, military life is about sacrifice um, and I wouldn't want to encourage anyone to join without sharing that with them be prepared to sacrifice however also prepare yourself for the rewards because there are some really cool rewards to this life um, I would tell folks to uh, understand that it's important to get a couple of things right early. Be where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be there, and in, with the right uniform equipment, and do what you're asked to do. Do what you're expected to do. Nobody knows you from anybody. It's a huge organization and you can get lost really fast. But if you do those two things and do it to the best of your ability, uh, you're going to get recognized. Right. So that competition piece, you're going to see people fighting for things and folks are going to gravitate towards you and they're going to mentor you and they're going to lead you down the right path. Um, so again, um, doing those two things, it, I think just opens doors for you um, to even greater rewards. You're going to get a reward anyway. The camaraderie, the sisterhood, brotherhood, the, the feeling of family. Um, I have made some incredible uh, lifelong friends through the military. And honestly, in my heart, they're family. You know what I mean? Right. And they're spread, you know, spread out. I know people everywhere. Um, so again, rewards are great, um, but do those two things to open the doors. Seek out a mentor. Um, you can go further, faster, if you have somebody who's gone before you and who's traveled the path that you're trying to travel onto. Um, so seek out a mentor um, and you can find those easily. You, the, the shining stars definitely shine bright in right. the military. Yeah. So um, find that shining star, um, you know, ask them to be your mentor. Um, emulate some of the things that they are doing. Ask 
all the questions that you want to ask um, and ask more questions, follow on questions yeah. if you still don't understand. Third thing I would say is if you were like me, it's going to be your first time coming into some a nice pot of cash <laughs> at the end of the <laughs> month. Um, I learned about investment yeah. later in my career. Invest your money as soon as you start earning it. You didn't have it before, so you won't miss the little bit that right. you will be investing. Um, make your money work for you. You know, don't always, don't live your life out having your money, you know, having to work for your money. Right. Make your money work for you. Being at a zero <laughs> every time you, yeah. new paycheck comes exactly. around. Exactly. Pay yourself and invest. Awesome. And, and of course, I'd say tithe. But <laughs> <laughs> what got you to 24 years, and what decision made you get out in 24 instead of going, say, 30 years? Yeah. Okay. Um, so what got me through the years? Um, not figuring it out. You know, I told you I came in and I didn't know what I wanted to do, and before I knew it, I was at the 10-year mark. And you know the story is once you hit ten, that's it. You better not. You better not. You know. Lifer. <laughs> yeah, you're a lifer. You better not get out. You got retirement right around the corner. And I still didn't understand what that meant. Right. You don't know what retirement means until you retire. Right. You don't understand the benefits that you receive until you retire. Um, so hit the ten year mark, still not, not still not understanding, and um, decided okay. I'm a lifer, you know, that's what they said, 10 years, I <laughs> gotta do it. Um, and I was having fun, you know, and so about the 10 year mark, it kind of all came together, get a mentor, it should have came to me a lot sooner. Um, but about the 10 year mark, you know, I started to figure it out, started to get my feet under me, I was having a good time. Um, you know, my promotions were coming, you know, um, uh, doing some horse stuff, um, love soldiers, I love soldiers. Uh, so, um, you know, having, having a good time, had some really great soldiers doing some really horse stuff, soldier of the year boards and all kinds of cool stuff, right? Nice. Um, so, you know, having a, a really great time, um, figured out what I, that I needed to get my butt in school because mm -hmm. that was the, that was the, the goal at the beginning. Right. Um, got got into school and of course I enjoyed that uh, tuition assistance <laughs> um, you know yes I had a GI Bill another benefit right yes yeah. I had a GI Bill set aside if I wanted to get out and go to school but right. while I was in you know they're paying my tuition you know so why not you right. know and um, you know going through school it was hard you know having a full-time job a career um, uh, shortly a after the 10-year mark a family uh, and trying to, to go to school, that was a little tough. Um, but again, it, you know, the military's paying for it, so I, I owed myself, and, and I took advantage of that. Um, and so, uh, fast forward to about the the twenty year mark, when everybody decides that's time to go home, <laughs> right? Yeah. And uh, you know, I love my family. I you know, I'd missed my family. Um, and at the 20 year mark, the army does what it usually does and it dangles that little carrot. And um, there was two things actually. Um, so it was a promotion opportunity to master sergeant. And, um, and I, uh, at that point, you could start transferring your, your GI Bill, your benefits oh, yeah, yeah, to your yeah. family members. And I, I had a daughter and so again, I was letting the military pay for my, they, pay, they paid for my undergrad, and I was moving on to my grad degree. Um, it was going to be paid for, so I thought, why not set my daughter up for success, right? Why not transfer her a four-year ride to my child, you know? Um, and so I had to give a serv service obligation to do that. Oh um, yeah, four years. Yeah, right. I, I think okay. it was like three, four years. Three, okay. So three years for the master sergeant, three or so years for the, the transferring of the benefits, 24 years. Wow. <laughs> it goes fast. Yeah. It goes so fast. It's, it's like a How was your transition mm -hmm. after 24 years mm -hmm. out of the Army mm -hmm. into the civilian life? Yeah. Okay. Is this a keep it real show? Yeah. <laughs> Are y'all a keep it real audience? That's the question. Uh, transition was tough. Mm. 
it was tough. Um, like I said, uh, there, there, you, you become a part of a, a team, right? Mm -hmm. And to be quite honest, I kind of lost Monica, and I was master sergeant, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, or sergeant, whomever, or private, whomever. You know, 24 years is a long time, and I let the lines blur. You know, Monica was her rank, her uniform, her unit, her soldiers, you know. I, I didn't know who I was, mm -hmm. you know. I, I knew I was a mom, I knew I was, you know, um, a student, you know, I knew those things, but who was Monica? What made Monica tick? What made Monica happy? Monica was doing what she had to do for, you know, all of these people. Um, and so when it came time to let go of the military, I was, I was kind of scared. And uh, if you asked my boss at that time, who is oddly enough still my boss, <laughs> but <laughs> if you ask my boss at that time, he will t tell you that I worked until the day before my transition leave. Mm. And most soldiers, you know, when it comes time to retire, it's like, okay, I'm retiring, I'm gonna back out, and I'm gonna go take care of, you know, these things I need to take care of. To the point, I didn't even apply for VA disability until after I was on transition leave. Um, I didn't want to let go. I didn't know how to let go. Um, so I found myself in kind of a dark place when I didn't have to wake up and put on a uniform and have a purpose for the military. Um, it was it was hard, and um, you know uh, my identity was so tied in that uniform um, and. And so, you know, on the other side, you know, you know, there was some things I started to learn about myself. You pull off, it's like my superpowers <laughs> were stripped yeah. of me yeah. when I took off my uniform. Um, and I was vulnerable and I was exposed and I had all these feelings. And, you know, um, again, you grow up in a military that says, if you're feeling a certain kind of way, figure that out. But we don't want to know about it because right. if we know about it, then it may impact certain jobs, security clearances, those mm -hmm. kinds of things. Yeah. And so the type of, of stuff that I'm talking about here is like depression and, you know, anxiety and, you know, I'm now learning PTSD, right. you know, things that I didn't address while I was in the military for those reasons I just said. Right. Um, and again, you're outside and you're, you're having these feelings and these thoughts and you can't you don't know why, and you don't know what it is, and you don't know where it came from. Um, so it was it was a difficult time transitioning. Um, but through the transition, again, I picked up some skills, right? I picked up some of those gold nuggets. Um, Monica, you, you've gotten through. You've been exposed to tough times. You, you've proven that you can, you know, continue. You can, you can pick yourself up. And so using those skills on the outside, I, I did that, you know, um, right. because I had, I, had, I had to, A, I had a daughter who was depending upon me. Um, so, you know, it was, it became, okay, what do I do with this? Let, let me go to the VA and let me figure this out. Right. Um, and I will tell you, um, there's a question that you're gonna get to and, and maybe, um, um, but I will tell you, there's no manual <laughs> mm -hmm. for retirement. There's no manual on, you know, what that looks like or what you might experience or what you might go through. And um, again, having grown up in the military in a time that's not like that now, thank goodness, right. um, to an extent, I imagine it might still be, but um, to grow up in a time where you kept that to yourself, yeah. you know, that was the mentality, you don't share that. Um, I, st I carried that with me. So I wasn't trying to connect with other people who might be, you know, transitioning and possibly experiencing the things that I was experiencing. But I had the wherewithal to say, I'm not gonna stay here. And I'm gonna go find someone who can help me understand this and help me manage this, right? right? And so the VA, you know, um, 
it took me a few calls, you know, I, you know, because I didn't know what to say. I didn't even know how to term what I was feeling or experiencing. So when I'm calling folks, they're like, ma'am, mm, come in, maybe you've got a headache, you know, or, you know, why do I have chest pains? Oh, let's test your heart. Oh, no, there's nothing wrong. It was a cardiologist, actually, <laughs> who told me, ma'am, your heart's fine. Um, I'll see you in about 30 years, but uh, you might consider um, uh, the fact that you have anxiety, and maybe you should go see, you know, a counselor. I said, I won't get on the phone with the VA. I got it. <laughs> I think I know what it is. And, uh, and yeah, and like I said, it's about managing it. Um, the one thing that I wanted to do was reject it because, again, being in the military, that not-so-great side is you have to be at your peak. Yep. You have to perform. You have to push through. You have to execute. And I get it because, again, the mission is significant. We go to war, you know. That's our purpose, wartime, right? Yep. Fighting the nation's fight to, to maintain our liberties. Um, so you have to be on your peak. Um, so again, it was, it was um, very difficult, very difficult for me to wrap my arms around the fact that, that this is, is something I'm going to have to live with. I wanted to reject it. I didn't want it. Oh, my anxiety, depression, PTSD, not me. No, because I have to do these things that I was still tied to, right? right? Because I didn't know how to do this transition thing I was still trying to pull myself apart from the uniform and be who I am um, so again I wanted to reject not me I don't have it how do you how do you cure this mm -hmm. you know how, is there a pill you know what do I do how do, how do I get I don't want and you know through many sessions of therapy I've come to understand it's not something that necessarily goes away it's just something that you manage and what I learned that was that while I was on active duty, I had things in my life that were helping me manage it. I had it before I even retired. It didn't happen overnight, right? There were experiences that I had in the military that contributed. But um, it, while I was in the military, I'm, I'm doing PT five days a week. You know, I'm, you know, I've got things to concentrate on and I'm, you know, I have things to keep me busy. You, you come on the outside, and, and, and the soldier, again, those sacrifices, you're, it's 24-7, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, you know, yeah, I had some time to myself on weekends, but a lot of times I didn't, you know, or after work. My, my nights would go long. I'd work and take care of the kid, I'd get some rest, and I'd start all over again, right? right. I was busy or asleep. That was right. my life. Now, you know, I'm transitioned. I have a little more time on my hands. I can sit with myself and understand that I have you know, these feelings and these thoughts and, you know, what is this and, yeah, so. <laughs>